Welcome back, guys, here. We have another 2-0 after the three-minute break here. Uh, Samsung, in fact, over the Jin Air Green Wings. We had two pretty incredible games there played by the two Samsung players. One was uh, very nicely done TVT by Bravo. Another one was a very nicely executed all-in by Deer. Yeah, and now it comes down to Journey versus Trap. Trap has to win this to keep them in it. Otherwise, they just take a, a, a quick 3-0. But I think if, Jenny, if Trap takes it over Journey, SOS should take it over Reality, and they should go to an ace match. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you there. Um, I was thinking before that this would go to an ace match, but uh, after having Bravo win that first one, uh, Samson definitely does have a chance here. You do see that it is split here three to three, me, you, and Daehyun going for Journey, and uh, the MC over there, Kanata and Wolf going for um, the other guy, Trap. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. The map is Iron Fortress as well, mind you. You know, one of those bigger open maps. Still good for drops, though, and uh, great for Hellions. So, no doubt, we're probably going to see a pretty good Hellions in the map. Try for this run by, try to oppress at the front. It's going to force Trap to kind of uh, turtle up a little bit, block the ramp with Stalkers. It's good to leave his main a little bit more open to drops. But here we go, introducing the players. Journey. One and two versus Protoss, four and three overall. Yeah, like we said before, he's a very smart player. He plays here for Samsung. He's playing against some of the best players in the world, and he's four three. Uh, used to be part of SVT. Yeah, that's right. Never got really any play time though. Never really found it out of that B time, uh, B teamer. Yeah. Same, the same as Bravo, you know. Yeah. Coming over here to Samsung, trying to make a name for himself. These two Terran players, they got a lot of potential, and we're beginning, we're beginning to see it slowly. And I'm liking it. Yeah, I, I actually am a big fan of Journey. I, I think he's a very talented yeah. player, and he's very he's worked very hard to get here. And we've been seeing him you know, improve more and more in Pro League when we do get to see him come out. It's another big shot here today. If he can close things out for Samsung, it's going to put them in such a great place going into to round four like this. Well, on the other side here for the Generic Green Wings, it is Trap. Five and three. One and one. He's had some success abroad, and... You know, he's a pretty strong player, but he still doesn't come out all that often for the Jinair Greenwings. Yeah, a lot of people consider him to be a pretty, uh, pretty, what's the term, Valdez? The uh, underhyped player, I guess, underestimated sort of player. He's never put out that often, but he is a great player when he does. He plays fantastically, but uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting that we don't see him come out as often as we think he should. Underrated. Underrated, thank yeah. you. He definitely is. He's an extremely smart player, extremely good Protoss, but let's see what he's going to be able to do here against Journey. We're favoring Journey, but it really could go either way here on Iron Fortress. Let's jump into it right now. Up here in the top right in the blue from Samsung Galaxy Con, the Terran player, it is Journey. Down here in the bottom right for Jinnak Green Wings. Has to win this game no matter what, it is Trap. All the pressure now on Trap. And even on Journey, like you were saying before, we really do not favor reality in his chances against SOS. No, I think they have to do it here if they want to try and uh, win this match. Because you no doubt Maru will come out in that ace match as well, and Maru is an absolute beast when, it, when the time comes. He will go bio next time against Bravo, I yeah. promise you. <laughs> it's going to be a totally different map, yeah. actually. It's actually a very good point, and that map will be Terraform. Yeah, two-player map, I think you definitely could go by on that map easily. Or at least, like, bio tank. Yeah, it wouldn't be bad for mech either, that kind of map, but, um, you know, smaller. More intimate map, Valdez. A lot more drops will be happening. More intimate. You yeah. can get closer to your opponent. Exactly. Yeah. You get to know like what his favorite food is and yeah. more about his past relationships and stuff. And watch him just a little bit more. Yeah. See what he does. I'm sure you can ask Bravo about his time on SKT and how it was like living with all his youngs in the house. I'm sure, it'd be very interesting to know about that. Yeah. Well, you know, just seeing a standard sort of opening here with the. Uh, Rax Gas, most likely going to be a reefer in this kind of map. Want to scout everything. 
Probably going to go for a couple of Reapers, perhaps, into Hellions from there. Look for those, uh, looks for the probe damage early. Would be my guess, Valdez. That or a quick factory? Yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting to see uh, what he does here. Uh, unfortunately, Trap going the opposite way in his scouting pattern. It's going to be a very long time until he sees what Journey has going on. But once he sees that Reaper, he'll have a decent idea. Yeah. Absolutely. Already trapped. Looking really a nice little Sim City there. Trying to, it's going to block out that Reaper. I'm doing too much probe damage when the time comes. And I'm curious to see how many Reapers we're going to see come out of this. I, I wonder if it's going to be two or three. No, I mean two or one. One or two. <laughs> there we go. Uh, you got him in mid. I got this. Our brains are still fried. They were flying in the air for a while. But fried chicken, man. Yeah. It's going to be a reactor off this. Yeah. Maybe you have that, uh, well, just reactor to start things off. Looks like Trap will complete his Zealot. Just use that to get rid of this annoying SCV. Or no. No, oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Hmm. He shouldn't have made a Zealot. He really, you know, if he was going to pull the second probe here, would have been enough. Yeah, I, I'm not sure why he decided to make that Zealot. Maybe just super paranoid that it was going to come. And he actually gets a probe for his efforts as well, and it's going to be that Nexus, so maybe a little bit of a mistake there. Or maybe he's just going to plan to use it just to help block the ramp from these Hellions that could come out. I suppose, but it will be kited for a while by uh, Sorry. the Reaper. I was going to say, look at this. We're actually seeing two more racks go down, so it is going to be a, a bit of a bio timing behind this as well. What do you think about that? That's going to be... I think this is fantastic. I think it's probably the, one of the lo least expected for this map. You know, uh, a lot more tech sort of builds are uh, opening up on this map. You see a lot more Hellions come early, yeah. kind of pressure, which is why we do see that safety pile at the bottom of the ramp to help block. Yeah. Because it's such a common occurrence. So throwing out three racks like this, you could even see like a, a timing, you know, with concussive shells and uh, concussive shells and combat shields, perhaps, or a really fast stim timing. Yeah, unfortunately for Journey, everything did get scouted by that probe of Trap. Yeah, so that doesn't help. Whatever surprise he was going for with this kind of build is going to be kind of null. We do see a Twilight Council here because he knows he's not really going to need that uh, detection for a while. So he can just go for that blink early, deal with the possible harass. Looks like combat shields. Okay, yeah. Combat shields make sense, you know, because he already got the reactor so early on the first rack, he's going to be pumping out a lot of Marines. Oh, this is like a bomber build. Yeah. Ooh, Dark Shrine. Ooh. All right. Not a bad choice either. Oh, but the Reaper's going to get in the base. Oh, uh, they're going to find it. Oh, that block with the probes. Oh, man. Oh, that's so huge. Why it's there. Beautifully done, That the Dark Shrine on the bottom left of that base. You know, but he may have noticed that the, uh, the Twilight Council was not upgrading anything. Possibly. Yeah, if he was looking hard enough. I'm sure he was. That could uh, definitely lead to something here. Let's see if he throws out an engineering bay. He does. Oh, he does. I think he knows. Yeah, he's got a fair idea. A little tingle might be the case. He's going to move out now. It's going to line up nicely with that combat shield. And there's not much at home besides his potential DTs that are going to help out against this. Yeah, one scan that'll be focused down immediately and... He's really going to have to rely on that Photon Overcharge. Ooh, the Zealot. Yeah. Is the Zealot actually going to go in or is it just going to stay out front? Because if, if it goes in, that's huge. If it stays out front, that's bad. All right, it's going to go. It's going to poke the front. But I'm not sure if he saw. I don't think he knows. The positioning he, he of the Journey's bunker. units are over to the right. Oh, man. This could be very bad. But we are seeing warp-ins, and they're actually towards the natural. Oh, look at this. He's going to catch... Oh. Both stalkers here for free. This is huge. He's actually going to get to work on the mothership, I think. Oh, look at that. There's already a turret at the front. These two DTs are going to go down for no damage at all. Journey is doing so much damage here in the natural. Ten probes already go down. He's going to force the force build on the ramp. Perhaps we're just going to back out and wait. But, man, ten probes going down at this point. The DT is doing absolutely no damage. This is insanely huge for Journey right now. Sick build. Even though Trap was able to see all the racks coming up, he didn't know the timing, I suppose. And I he had his stalkers in a terrible position. Yeah, you know what? That Zealot was too late to the front of that base because he looked at the front and he was like, okay, something's up there. I'm not going to go too far in. He completely missed the bio. It's almost like he was faking a defense against 
like maybe the possible blink at a trap that the Reaper had seen. Yeah, I think so. It, trap was like, oh, he he's gonna be defensive. He thinks I'm gonna go blink on him. Yeah, exactly. But actually, no. Completely wrong. Completely missed Cole. Completely out of position. And he, he took a big chunk of his uh, economy for it. But you know, the game isn't over just yet. There's a quite a supply advantage for Journey, but Journey's got to close it out here, and it's gonna be up to Trap to defend against everything that comes his way from now on. In. Here's one DT in the main. There's already a turret in the mineral line, but maybe be able to get some kills. That War Prism's following pretty close behind. He can pick him up if he needs to get out, and there you go. The kill's not bad. Yeah, not too bad at all. You can see that pylon get wiped out just outside the natural as well. Oh, man, those two pylons there are so late. Going to be supply blocked here for a while. He did make an immortal and an extra gate. Mm, I do like the immortals. Uh, I do like Animortal. It's going to help out. I think it's like a great sort of idea against these bio-heavy players. The bio-heavy style we do see these days because they're always stimming in, trying to focus down on the important uh, units. So if you've got a, yeah. an Immortal there, you're doing mad damage to anything that comes close. Exactly. You, you see Terrans all the time. It's like usually four or five Marauders. They, they're they like the small task force, the Colossus sniping task force. And if you can target your Immortal on those Marauders, they go down like, like flies. Yeah. Just way too much damage there. We are seeing a bio force move on the map once again to start applying that pressure. Maybe look for a double drop to the main if uh, Trap isn't suspecting it. Two DTs in this war prism. And it's not much back at home right now for Journey oh. if they drop on top of the Marines. Oh. Well, Marines could stim, maybe take down that war prism, then the DTs are stuck. One option. Look at this, we got more pressure here out of Journey. Should be able to snipe this gateway. War gate here. Some forces out that phone and overcharge as well. Very nice. A clean, uh, clean bit of harassment there. Yep. Oh, look oh. at this. The Marines in position. Man, he's on top of this defense like nothing else. Yeah. It's fantastic. And now he's going for Vikings. I kind of like this because he's so far ahead in the Colossus number for Trap is going to be really low for a long time. So he can get so many Vikings out before. You know, there's too many Colossi and maybe go for a big push here in the big game. Yeah, it's such the opposite style that we see like Mario usually go for or the like Dream even. Like he's going to get like that perfect amount of Vikings very early on here to crush it. Because you know what the scary thing on this kind of map or the most expected thing, especially from Protoss, is two base timings. If he's going to throw out a few Colossus plus some Immortals and keep warping and stuff on two base, most likely he's going to go for a timing. And we did see that recently in uh, DreamHack 2, I believe. I think Fantasy lost a patience might have even been on this map, actually, mm. in that style. Yeah. Well, look at this. We already see Trap transitioning out of Colossus. He's going to make two, and then he's going to go straight back into Immortals. He's getting charged. He's getting the Templar Archives. Mm. I think he's, he's, he's fixing for uh, an Archon, perhaps. Yeah. A couple of Archons behind this, because he needs a third base if he really wants to go into a healthy amount of Storm. For sure. He's I think getting... it's definitely going to be those Archons. Yeah. Try to get some money force fields. Use your two Colossus in the back, I suppose, to hold for now. Yeah, he's also getting plus one attack, which which leads us to believe he's going to go for a very aggressive build. He isn't yeah. trying for the late game here. Ooh, Storm. Okay, he is going to commit to that on two base here. It's interesting, man. Well, I guess from here on out, he's, he's planning to invest in a lot of Zealots. He is going to charge already. So it's, it's one thing to consider as well, but you know, if it's going to be on two base, it's going to be hard to get everything up and running at the same rate Journey is. And I mean, Journey's already making three ghosts. Yeah, Journey's on top of this play so far. Yeah, this is what we were expecting out of this guy. He's a very strong Terran. He is a great player, and he's making all the right calls right now. And I, I can't wait to see what he's planning to make from this factory. Is he going to get from Winter Mines? Because that'd be cool. I would be cool with Widow Mines right now, but yeah. Hellbats would also be fantastic. He continuously scans and like gets a read on what his opponent is doing. I think he also caught the Templar Archives there, so I'm sure he's got a very good idea of what Trap is uh, fixing for. Look at this. Does, he, uh, does Journey want to try and engage his army? He's going to be on top of him. He's going to actually find it and spin back. Very close there. If his army gets forced to that and his medibacks get uh, feedback, it yeah. big problems. Really nice kiting here for now. Looks like Trap's trying to split up a bit, but small task force coming forward. Three force fields here for two Marauders. Not terrible, but he loses a Stalker and a couple of Zealots, too. Once those Ghosts join up with the army, I think Journey can just crush it. Yeah, he'd be in a great place to do so. I mean, Storm is finished now there. I mean, so. that army, EMP is the direct counter. You yeah. get six Ghosts out here, eight Ghosts even. Oh, man. And Widowmines. Yeah. 
I'm so happy we're seeing Minimines, by the way. Great choice of this composition. It's all going to be about positioning more than anything else, though. There's still two Colossals with him as well. This is also so smart. Journey's like, okay, oh. I know I'm ahead. All I have to do is stop the drops coming in, the harass from the Protoss that would pull me all the way back. And now I can go for the attack. Oh, and look at those Wooden Mines as well with this army. And now the Ghost in position looking for these EMPs. They might get some huge <laughs> EMPs. <laughs> they get so many of those High Templars, the Immortals as well, and even the Colossi. Oh, it's going to be a hard fight. Beautiful concave at the bottom of this ramp here. The Storms might be what evens it up, though. Really nice storms, in fact. Going to get most of that bio, and a lot of the zealots at the top getting focused down by the Widow Mines. Everything is going down. Oh, more reinforcements coming in, though, but more as well from Journey. Is he got enough to crush his army? He does. Wow. 3 0 for Samsung. Journey. Unbelievable. Oh, this is beautiful play from Samsung. I'm so happy. Finally, see them get a good win like this. Yeah. They're coming into this strong man. Round four. Against Jin Air of all teams. You know, they use one of their. Uh, less played players in trap as well as uh, as well as tech there in the second game. They're gonna pay for it. Samson gets that 3-0, looking really strong. Sick wins there. Oh man, great to see the Terrans finally getting some uh, some work done from Samsung as well. Bravo and Journey, yeah. really lifting already. Also, Deer just doing his job, you know, nicely executed all in. One of those games that's not really going to go down in the books, but you get a win, and that's all he needs. Damn, man. That play out of Bravo as well earlier on. Just insane mech TVT. And then from here, Journey just, like, giving us all a lesson on how to deal with Protoss. Yeah, he, he he looked so polished that game. He made every right choice. His positioning was fantastic. His unit composition choices, were, he was so on top of them. Yeah. He made them all at the perfect amount of time, like, perfect right time. He had Vikings out when he needed to. He had Ghosts out before he needed them. Yeah. And it just led up, led up to that perfect engagement. I also love the, you know, very free use of scams. He was, like, continuously scanning over and over, you know, sacrificing some mule, sacrificing some economy. But that's why he was able to be so far ahead in terms of unit composition. Like, the second he saw another Immortal come out, he's like, all right, Ghost. And then he, he gets, like, six or eight of them by the time he's got that huge Zealot with Charged Army and uh, the High Templars and the Immortals. But uh, here is the 3-0 result, as we were talking about. Bravo over Maru, Deer over Czech. Just some kind of crazy upsets today. And we won't see uh, Maru gain any more points today. Just another extra loss. And we do see Innovation jump up a rank. Sue jump up two, taking that easy win over Boom Boom. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of those guys up near the top are happy that Maru was able to go down today. Yeah. That would have given him a clear lead. Kind of sad we don't get to see SOS, to be honest. He's always a really fun player, especially in PvT, but yeah. I mean, that's maybe a, next time. That's the risk you run, uh, putting a player fourth like that as well. Such a strong player. Like, you, you probably want him a little bit early just so you can guarantee that fourth game no matter what. 